Um, Peter, let's take a look at the uh, the last sections of this chapter. Uh, chapter, and here we talk about the shear flow or shear stress in the thin walled uh, members or thin walled beams. Uh, thin walled beams basically usually features as the I shape or T shape, and with the thickness um, the smaller than the other uh, two dimensions. Okay, so that is the feature here. So in this section, at the beginning, we simply want to learn, uh, this is our final goal. We want to learn why the shear distribution of the shin stress on a cross section like this, okay? Um, so let's start with this. So for example, if <coughs> I want to know the shin stress at this section here, so to uh, knowing the tau uh, for this one, then basically we know we can calculate tau equal to VQ over IT, okay? In terms of shear flow, we know that uh, Q equal to the VQ over I, okay? And for this case, this is a selected section, and then let me put it into three-dimensional drawing like this. So that is the section we pick here. So here in terms of this one, this is A prime, okay? So in terms of the two-dimensional drawing, and let me put into two-dimensional drawing here. So this is the T shape of uh, the I shape of this given cross section, and this is the neutral axis. Okay, and that is the direction where the V apply. And now for this case, we choose is this level here. So follow up our previous calculations, and we know we can choose the shaded area for calculating Q. And shaded area is can be chosen from either side of the selected level. So let me pick the smaller one. So the smaller one has the area, of, let me call the area A start, and centroid of the smaller shaded area is here. So the distance from that centroid to here, let me call the Y star bar. So in this case, Q equal to A star times Y star bar. That's easy. So for this case, you should be able to determine, say, the tau equal to VQ over IT and V is given here. I is the total, uh, the, um, the moment of inertia of the whole uh, I shape cross section respect to the neutral axis. Okay, that is the one we just like we did in chapter four. So this should be no problem. And T is the width of the selected section here. As T is the width of the selected um, the level. So basically T is the same here. Okay, so that is the T. Let me put this one here. So this is a T. Okay, so T, we can do this one. So in this way, if you want to do the calculation, the magnitude, the magnitude is given by this. And now how about the direction? <coughs> the direction can be easily seen by using the three, uh, the three dimensional drawing. And then the same concept I'm going to adopt uh, from the beginning of this chapter here. I simply looking for the static equilibrium and then by uh, finding what is the direction of the uh, the the stream force, okay. So I choose this three <coughs> this three D. So basically, this is the sections we expose, okay. And I want to know the direction of the theta edge stream force here. So let me change the color here. Um, so under this case, you can see if you take the free bar diagram, the other side of the exposed uh, the section is in the back here, and I, as a highlight here. In this highlight section, because here there's a reaction bending, okay, that reaction bending you can actually obtain by taking the equilibrium of the um, the small piece, or you can draw the shear and bending moment diagram. You can find the bending here and in that direction. So the bending is like this. So basically acting on this side that we have the normal stress. Okay, we have the normal stress that is due to bending. Okay, and that bending, um, you take the integral of the normal stress over the this area. Okay, over this area. So over the, you do the surface integral over this area and that is a force here. And this force basically uh, equivalently is in that direction. So in this way to get in ecstatic equilibrium with this force, the H must be in this direction as shown here. Okay, and 
as shown here. Okay, so here I shown here. So this is the direction of the data edge. Okay, so that is the direction data edge, and then and we kind of doing this one here. So let me erase the things to expose. Okay, just like I uh, the 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 showing here. Okay. So data edge is in that direction and showing like this one and we know uh, in principle our calculation VQ over IT actually is equal to data edge divided by this area and that area has the uh, thickness and times data x okay so basically that is the our origins of this formula of this formula from okay so that is the one we calculated so therefore let me draw this one here so that means in that area the distribution of the string strength is like this or you can say the distribution of the shear flow is like this so again uh, using our concept of chapter one if you on one side the shear force or shear stress is like this the other side should be like this okay so then let me copy this information to here so on that surface the shear floor or shear stress should be in that direction so that is showing like this one here okay so you can repeat the same calculations and to every section here, 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 or here, 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 okay. You can exercise and save, uh, you can do the exercise repeating the same reasoning over the eight places as I highlight here, then you can quickly identif identify the direction of the shin stress will be like this. And now we take a look at the shin stress in the web here. Okay, in the web here, basically here you take the cross section. Let me pick another color here. So if you want to know the uh, the shin stress along the web, so you simply now we're looking for this one. So again, here is a level we pick, and then repeating our calculation. I think this is one example uh, we seen in the earlier chapter in the earlier uh, section there. So for this case, again you can calculate the Q and I is the same and T is the, the width here okay and so for this case Q is for this kind of the uh, blue shaded area and V is the same as given I is the same T is determined by the width of the web here so um, so <coughs> under this case you should be able to determine the magnitude of the uh, string stress here and the direction how about the direction? The direction, again, you can repeat the same calculations and quickly you should be able to identify the direction of the string stress should be in the same directions of the given V loading and the same, this is what we talked about before in the earlier sections. In the web, okay, along the vertical uh, portion here, that direction is uh, in line to uh, aligned to the direction of the V. So that means here we are able to determine the uh, the stress and in the vertical portion that is downward. So overall, in summaries, this is the uh, the distribution of the string stress, and from here you can determine the directions and also um, the magnitude. Okay. And here is a very quick, um, the kind of the, um, uh, you can memorize, okay, you can memorize or apply this kind of direction in this. Here is the, uh, my suggestions to you. For example, if the eye shape will be like this, okay. So, and here is the applied V. So the way I suggest you to uh, memorize this kind of the distribution is this. First, you determine the direction of the shin stress in the vertical portion. So that should be in alignment, aligned to the direction of the V. So that is should be downward here, okay? And then uh, on the, um, the top and the bottom portion here, then you have to maintain the flow in continuous manner. So in this way, accordingly, that will be going like this, okay? Again, you try to maintain the, the, 
the continuous continua, continu, continuations of the shear flow or shear uh, information. So to the bottom here, then basically you kind of the follow the flow and that kind of go uh, diverge to here. And on the surface, the shear stress equal to zero. Okay, so basically they start from zero and then gradually increase and then gradually increase. The maximum should be around here. Okay, and then come to here, diverge to the both side and then come to zero again. So that is a way to uh, correctly uh, and quickly uh, demonstrate, uh, illustrate the direction of the string stress in the web here. And here, uh, furthermore, I want to emphasize is this, and uh, I want to emphasize the components of the string stress. Okay, so here, given our direct, the sorry, the uh, the coordinate system, this is x in in the longitudinal directions. And this is y, okay, and z is aligned to the neutral axis. So in this way, you can see basically these cross sections is the x plane, okay. The x plane that means this is a cross section here. The x plane that means is normal unit out, normal unit is pointing to the x direction. So that's called the x plane. So the stress in the x plane right now we talk about is the string stress, and now let's talk about this, okay. That is in X plane and pointing to which direction is pointing to Z direction. So that is the tau XZ. And how about this component? This is a string stress in X plane and pointing to Y direction. Okay, here is in the negative Y. So, but here we are uh, using this notation as uh, still in the Y direction here. Okay, so again, uh, this kind of notation, if you remember in uh, from chapter one, the first substrate is to denote which plane the string stress is on. The second substrate is to denote which direction it's pointing to. Okay, so here, basically, in this sort of things, we actually you involved, uh, you are involved with dealing with two uh, different uh, shin stress components. Okay, keep this in mind. So from this page, basically, three things uh, for you to take home. The first one again, apply our formula uh, VQ over IT or VQ over I uh, in terms uh, for calculation of the magnitude. The second one is to determine the directions uh, of the shin stress. Okay, the third one is to identify the components for each the shin stress we've just been uh, exercised here. Okay. So this page is the summary uh, of what I just uh, went over, and you can refer to the textbook for a little bit more elaborations and about what I'm saying here. Okay. Um, here we talk about another common shape, and here I call the box shape. And box shape just like the showing here. Uh, this is the figures I produce uh, from Fusion 360, and take a little bit of time. Uh, but here I think this good uh, worth of my time in uh, try to get a better illustration here. So again, here our goal is to. Uh, find out we are given the box shape uh, cross section like this and we are given the V okay this V is pointing downward uh, vertically and in this case okay um, and then uh, the V usually uh, at, at any cross sections uh, here you can find the magnitude of the transverse loading or shear force uh, by using shear uh, by apply the shear diagram or apply the equilibrium uh, to find it. Okay, but anyhow, that is this is our starting uh, point. So our goal is to identify why the shin stress uh, distribution is like this. Okay, and again, uh, the quickest way uh, before we move on to the detail, I think the quickest way is this. We can repeat the same the tip as I show you earlier. Okay, so this is the V here. Okay, and this is the neutral axis. So we start from identifying the direction of the stress in the vertical portion that aligned to the V. So that one must be in the same direction of the V, of the transverse loading, okay? And then you keep the everything the flow in a continuous manner. So in this way you can decide the the stress on the top should be like this, again, to maintain the flow in the continuous manner here, okay? And then down to the bottom here, then continuous flow, then the flow must be in this way, 
okay so from here you can see this the flow somehow kind of starting from somewhere here so let me highlight that point so this point is here okay and the flow will somehow converge and to here so basically the two points is a starting I would say the the this is a source or this is a sink uh, kind of the concept so the flow the stream stress will start the show shear flow will be started from here and then ended up here and indicating this should be zero it coming from nowhere okay so that is the kind of the memorize um, the mem uh, the try to memorize the things is a tip here okay so this is a kind of schematic and then now let's take a look at in detail how this can be done uh, why the direction is like this but again before we move on at this point the shear have the zero magnitude okay so actually the sh the shin stress here any point along here any point here equal to zero okay okay now let's uh, take a look at these uh, the things so the first one is um, let us uh, determine um, the uh, the the shin stress along this okay so to do this one and we need to pick a uh, free body diagram and then again I try to uh, follow the very original uh, schematics basically picking a free body diagram and then uh, taking the equilibrium and to find out the directions so so uh, here uh, to do this purpose and let me make the things here so P uh, is applied in the middle line so that is the line of the symmetry So respect to the line of the symmetry and we select a location where we're interested in knowing the magnitude or direction of the shearing. So respect to this selected and res <coughs> um, for the selected uh, levels and then I pick another one <coughs> that is symmetric uh, to the middle line. Okay, so that is a strategy here. I simply pick the two size and like I showing here that is a side and this is the each side is symmetric to the center line here okay so <coughs> again uh, for this case this is a loading P apply here and then on this side if you take the free bar diagram then you can see if you take a free bar diagram of this uh, the uh, the strip okay and then from there you can see the bending moment on the other side should be like this okay the bending moment should be like this uh, let me get into a better way so this is the uh, z-axis the bending moment should be about the z-axis okay that is the bending moment so for that kind of bending moment and we can see that is a bending stress so the bending stress should be like this okay so bending stress is m the magnitude is m y over i okay so we do the surface integral of the bending stress and over this area then we can obtain the total force that we call the f1 and f1 pointing to the opposite direction uh, going to that way so in this case you can see on the two side of the strip okay on the two side of the strip there exists the shear force and h is delta h so under this case 2 delta h in static equilibrium must be equal to f so in this case we successfully identify the delta h here and that direction must be moving out okay so the direction should be in this way so that direction should be in that way so in this case if you room out then on the side on the side here so in terms of this surface the shin stress should be in that direction on this side the shin stress must be in that direction just showing here okay so that is the based upon the identification uh, here the direction of the data edge is in this way okay so here we successfully identified the direction of like this and how about the magnitude the magnitude basically is this <coughs> from here you can see the data edge 
simply equal to f divided by 2. So tau equal to uh, delta h divided by the area. So again, uh, let me call this dimension is t, and let me call this dimension is delta x. So that is the area equal to delta um, uh, delta x times t. Okay, so let me plug in here. So that is the uh, f, and then divide by 2, that is delta h and delta x t. Okay. And if you remember the f uh, from the very beginning of these chapters, and that one basically can be described by vq over i. So that is f. Okay, so let me put into here q delta x and tf uh, times d. <coughs> Started here, uh, I forgot one term here. So again, this one um, f equal to this, okay? So again, this one you can refer to uh, the section one of this chapter here, okay? And there we have a detailed introduction there. So by doing this, you can cancel this one here. So from here, you can see VQ over IT and one half here. So let me explain what this means. So right now, I, for my choice, I pick is, let me use this color. So here, at the beginning, I pick the, uh, I, we select this level here. And then for that selection, we select we select its mirror place and respect to the middle line, and that's here. So for this case, in totally in this Fourier diagram, we pick on the cross section exposed is this area here. Okay. For that area, <coughs> and showing here, and the for this area, then this is our neutral axis. And this area uh, has, this shaded area has area A, and the centroid is here. The distance from that centroid to the neutral axis, let me call the Y bar, okay? So in this case, the Q equal to A times Y bar. So in this case, tau equal to VQ over IT. And in this is our original formula, and v is actually the v here given. So right now, Q, uh, v equal to p as given here. Okay, and q has been calculated like this one. Okay, q like uh, been calculated like this one here. And i is a moment of nature of the whole uh, the box about the neutral axis, and that should be easily calculated. And what is t? What is t here? Um, in our discussions, we said that T is the width of the cutted um, uh, level. T is the cutted, is the width of the cutted level. So in this case, you can see our cutted uh, level where? Here and here. We have two cutted places. So T here is the width of the cutted level. Here we have two pieces, say assuming if the box, this dimension is T here, okay, let me call the T, um, um, say, for example, if say this is, okay, so just, just, just say that this is the T, how about say T1 here, okay. So this dimension is T1. So again, uh, in our formula, T is the width of the cutted levels. Here we have two cuts in, in total the width is 2 times t0, t1. Okay, that's a t1. So that is the reason why from here uh, for the, our derivations and for this case this is the t1 here and we have this kind of the, the calculation to appear. Okay, so from here if you plug in everything here, vq 
over i t t is two uh, t one here. So that is the reason here we appear the one half of the t because here you simply select is a two side here. Okay, so keep these things going and then we can continue to repeat the uh, selections of the other places. So let me erase. Let me erase the more spaces for calculations here. Okay, so now we want to you know, uh, say the shin stress uh, here. Okay, so and on this level, so again, you pick another cut and, and at the same level here, and what you expose is the shaded area is like this. And you keep the cut symmetric reach to the, the, the middle line here, and the same thing. And what you're going to calculate is the Q uh, V, the tau equal to VQ over IT. And Q is the shaded area, uh, for the shaded area, okay? And V is the given one here, so the same, and I is the same of the as we calculated before the entire the cross section with respect to the neutral axis. And what is T? T again, T is the width. And let me call the dimension here. Let me use uh, this one. T is the width of the cut level. So basically when you do the calculation you plug in into this is a template. And V is the number we determine Q has been calculated and I has been calculated. And what's the T? T is the, in this template, T is the width of the cutted. So basically here we have two cuts, here and here in total, that give us 2T, okay? So that is a magnitude. And in a similar way, uh, for this case, we want to determine the directions of the, uh, the stress. So again, if you take the, this as a free bar diagram on this side, you can find the moment, reaction moment is this. So again, in that case, that will have produced the bending stress like this, and equivalently, we have the equivalent force. And the force, again, you can obtain is from the, um, the, uh, the surface integral of the bending stress there. So under this case, there's a two strip we've been cut. So that is the strip we expose. This one. And this one. On the two cut uh, cross section, they exist delta H here. So from this case, in terms of the equilibrium, uh, static equilibrium, you can see to be in balance with F, the direction must be in this direction, okay? So locally, so if the stress is in that direction, so let me uh, change the color here. So locally, the stress is in this, so the bottom side, so let me pick So in this case, accordingly, the stress on this side should be like this, okay? So so that is the situation here, we identify the stress on this side is the vertically, okay? So basically, using the two steps, we successfully uh, identify the directions of the string stress. And again, uh, this is the x-plane. So for this component, that is the string stress in x-plane and pointing downward and vertical direction is y direction. And for the blue one, and that is the in x plane and that is pointing in the z directions, so that is xz, okay? So here, this is our corner systems. Uh, x is in longitudinal direction, y and z. Okay, so that is the corner system. So with that corner system here, we actually have the two components here. Um, so now uh, we simply uh, almost answers all the question except why here the shin stress is zero uh, at this cut 
at this card. So let me explain that why here. Um, before doing that one, basically this uh, slide, uh, we um, before answer the question that is the zero stress at the middle here. Let me answer the first uh, the another question. What is the the maximum stress? Okay, so the maximum shin stress basically uh, can be determined by this. It happened at the cut here on the neutral axis. Okay, so simply I take the upper portions of the uh, free bar diagram and I expose here. So the direction is like this showing. Okay, so the, the the this is the shear flow and shear flow in the middle section here and in the middle level here. So that is shown in that direction. So the <coughs> so in this case this is the direction on the size, so that is the the shear flow there. And how to determine the magnitude, again that all depends on the Q. And here the Q for the upper portion of the shaded area, because here we pick the two cuts here. Okay. So here I split the the into three uh, small rectangles and to calculate Q. So uh, for this and for this, it has area six by three given um, given this dimension. Okay, refer to this dimension here. So and then its centroid is here. The distance from the centroid to here is three. Okay, and here we have two strips. So here I calculated is this portion. And for the upper portion here, and this one has the area uh, equal to 6 by 3, and the centroid is here from the centroid to the neutral axis is 4.5. So basically here I calculated Q equal to this number. And then here um, we know the Q, uh, we have the template and say for example here in total I using my symbols here is one shear flow Q max another shear flow Q max so here because we pick the two levels cut it level here each level has the Q max so in total in our template our template saying that the shear flow equal to VQ over I this is our template the shear flow on the cut it on the cut it levels. Here we have two cut it level, each is Q max. So in total Q max. Okay, so that reason here Q. And this is our template and V is the given here. Okay. And Q is what we calculated. I is the moment of financial of the whole box shape and respect to neutral axis. So but, but in this case we keep this number, this kind of symbolic in terms of V over I. Okay, we keep this one and then I will use this one for the next slides here. But anyhow, once we know the V, once we know the I, then we can determine the Q. And keep in mind this is our template, the shear flow. Q equal to BQ over I. What is the shear flow? Shear flow is the total, uh, the shear flow over the cut levels. Levels here is a plural levels. If you have a multiple levels, you simply sum up all the shear flows information together. And fortunately, for this case, because we cut it in symmetric over the symmetric cross section, so we can pretty much make sure the shear flow on each cut is. Due to the symmetry, the shear flow has a magnitude, it should be the same. Should be the same. Okay. However, let me make another example here. So if you have a box beam, something like this. Okay, so this is a transverse loading. Let me make one extreme example here. And here this is the neutral axis. And here again, I want to find out the maximum shear. So again, uh, very likely is at the middle here. So here you make two cuts, like this, similar to this one here. And let me call this is a Q max and say one. Let me say this is a Q max and say two. Let me ask you, is this magnitude equal to this magnitude? Are they equal?
the answer is this the answer is no the reason why is this you can see for this box beam its dimension is not symmetric respect to the <coughs> the middle line here so from here you cannot assume the shear flow on each cut is the same so basically here has two unknowns okay and for this case again if you want to put into the template here that should be q max one plus q max two equal to vq over i this is our template and v is a given v here and q is the shaded area being calculated using this geometry and i is the moment of inertia of the entire cross sections uh, respect to neutral axis so the same application of this formula however here because the this one in in magnitude not equal to this one so here we have two unknowns two unknowns with only one equation so here we need one more equation to solve for the two unknowns here okay so here is another kind of counter example respect to this uh, uh, the, this example we talk about here and for using this counter example simply I just want to exp uh, to demonstrate why here two and for this kind of symmetric and then here this one plus this one together is two here okay um, you may ask me what would be the another equation uh, needed for solving the two unknowns here and the answer at this moment given this kind of arbitrary examples my answer is uh, we can using the next slide try to get some hint uh, for this slide, we still back to our the given situations, and right now uh, I want to uh, determine is for example I want to determine uh, is the uh, the uh, what is the stress at this cut here, okay? And to answer these questions, and there's a two options you can try, and the first option is you simply pick another cut. And this cut is symmetric uh, respect to the middle line here so which means you pick the same locations for example if this is location A this is location A you pick another cut as symmetric respect to the middle line and using this shaded area for Q and V is given I you can calculate it so the same situations this is our template is a shear flow and shear flow right now you can see here you expose two cuts so let me call that the shear flow one and here another cut shear flow two and so that is q1 plus q2 here and again because you have selected the the cut that's symmetric respect to the middle line of the symmetry so here you can make sure q1 in magnitude equal to q2 so q1 has the magnitude equal to q2 okay so basically here let me say that is q1 here okay you can use this strategy and the strategy is the same as we've been talk about uh, determining this one here okay another strategy and i can show you uh, in this slide is this let me erase these informations and proceed to my another strategy and here uh, I talk about different strategies or different options uh, options basically showing there's a uh, not there's a not unique way to make a selection of the cut as long as the cut you select is, is convenient or convenient for your calculations okay another option for me to try is this because here I'm interested I'm interested in these sections and here in the previous slide I already know the uh, shear stress or shear flow along this cut so very naturally I pick this one okay so for this one again I have exposed two cuts one cut is here which is I'm interested in calculating the, the shear flow or shear stress another cut is here okay so let me uh, draw the cut so one cut is here and one cut is here and you can see the two cuts respect to the whatever the axis they are not symmetric so basically due to not symmetry and this is what we've been calculated the Q max we've been calculated from the previous slide 
and this one is Q. So because the two cards are not symmetric, we cannot say the magnitude are equal. So here, let me say this is uh, say QS. Okay. So because the two cards are not e equal, so here you should not assume this is the Q max here because they are the cards are not equal. So, but earlier uh, I select this card here and uh, select this and the kind of the exposed, the kind of shaded area for calculating Q here. So the Q basically will be equal to Q1 plus Q2 for the shaded area. Okay, for this shaded area, Q equal to Q1 plus Q2. Here I simply put into this way. And again, put into our template. And before we see the detail here, let me consider. A shear flow in template equal to VQ over I. And what is Q? Q being calculated this one, the Q of that plus the Q of this, Q1 plus Q2. And you should be able to calculate the Q1 and Q2 very easily, very quickly. And V is the transverse loading, and that is a V on the cross section, and that one can be obtained by drawing the shear diagram. Okay, so this one should be okay. And I is again the the uh, moment of inertia of the the box cross section respect to the neutral axis. So this one you should be able to do it very quickly, accurately. Uh, otherwise, you go back to the chapter four there. Okay, so once the three things together, so the right hand side of this equation that is a number you should be able to obtain. Okay, now we come to the shear flow. And again, what this means? That is mean the shear flows of the cuts of the total cuts. So that is shear flow here and here. So in terms of our template, that representing is a QS plus Q max. Okay, so in concept, this is the something like this one here. So keep this in mind, and then from here we can determine starting from here. QS plus Q max equal to in terms of a template put into these equations here. And then we've been calculated, I've been calculating in detail Q equal to Q1 plus Q2 equal to this number. I plug into here and V over I here. And then here, uh, based upon these assumptions, and then then here, I uh, we earlier in the previous slide we have the Q max determined by this number. So from here, therefore, we can determine Q S. And what is Q S? Q S equal to this one. Okay. So Q S equal to this one and. Here is the assumed directions, the QS and QMAX equal to the same direction, and that is the come to this equation here. And right now we have obtained the QS is a minus, so basically in this way, that is a minus to our assumed direction. So here this QS put into that direction, and then that has the magnitude, has a magnitude, VI times uh, 4.5s, okay, that's that's the magnitude here. So that is a calculated, and then here we have two pieces of information we can deduce. The first one is the Q is a shear flow indicating the shear uh, on this face should be like this, okay. And so that is the tell us the um, the reason here that direction is like this okay and then the second one here is I put into parametric so let me erase these portions to get it clear so QS equal to in magnitude QS in magnitude equal to VI and 4.5S. Okay, so QS is a function of S. So when S equal to zero, QS equal to zero. When S equal to zero, S is the distance measured from here to here. So that means when S equal to zero, that means the when we select the cut here, the Q equal to zero. Okay, 
So that is tell us the reason why the 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 shear flow or shear stress and on this cut equal to zero and here equal to zero here. Okay, so that basically is no shear flow along the central line CC of the box beam. So in this case, we complete our entire demonstrations, and here is the summaries. So if we consider the box beam of the width T everywhere, so this is a T here, and we don't consider that kind of the exact uh, the uh, different dimension, different thickness. Okay, so here is a V, and here is the neutral axis. So what we have learned is first one, the shear floor or shear stress along this cut equal to zero. Then the second one is the direction of the shear flow or shear stress is like this. Okay, the third one the maximum shear stress occurred at the middle line along the neutral axis. So that is the three pieces of information for you to take on. And <coughs> for box beam, and box beam in topology will be similar to the round shape, okay, the shape being here. So basically in terms of topology, that is similar to this one. Again, the cut here, zero uh, shear stress along this one, and then you simply at the middle line, you have all the flow is to uh, to follow the kind of streamline induced by the V. So around the center portion here, the direction is downward. So start from there, then you begin to keep this the kind of streamline of the shear, and then you will get to the drawing pretty, pretty quickly. Okay. So this, uh, let us uh, look at the one final example here. And for this case, we want to determine uh, for this box beam, we want to determine the string stress at A and B. And at A and B here, and we can say take the cut here, okay, for A. So for this case, I'm going to show you a few uh, the strategy, uh, I, I would say a few options, and how to select the shaded area for determining the stress we're interested, we're interested. So A is here. So we want to expose the information here. So the first one is I simply determine the Q at this cut here, okay? And let me designate it as a QA. And once I have the QA be determined, then the shear stress along the A will be equal to the QA divided by the thickness here. So the thickness is, I think the thickness um, is T equal to 0 0.5, okay? So simply divide by T. Okay, so our first step is to find the QA. The first options I'm going to show you to determine QA is this. I'm going to utilize the feature that I know the shear stress or shear flow here is equal to zero. I pick up these features, so I pick the two cuts and to form the shaded area. Okay, for this shaded area, again, we'll put into our template. Our template is this shear flow equal to VQ over I. And for this shear flow is the summation of the shear flow on the cut, on the selected cut, which is Q here, and that is zero. Plus the QA. So basically one shear flow here, that is the, the shear flow here. Okay, two things together equal to VQ over I. Okay, this one equal to zero, so basically QA equal to VQ over I. And what is V? V is the given. Okay, so from here, I is the moment of inertia of the entire cross section being calculated here. And then uh, Q simply is the shaded area, like I'm showing here in detail calculation is this number. Okay, and so for this case, we have the shear uh, V, so this is V equal to this one. So in this case, the V equal to 10,000 uh, pounds, and Q is calculated here, and I is the total moment of inertia 
of the entire cross sections respect to respect the neutral axis is here. Okay. So under this case, we are able to determine the QA. And once QA determined, then simply tau A equal to QA divided by T, and T is the width here, from here to here. Okay. So that means we obtain this one. The um, let me see. Do I have? Okay. Uh, the second options, uh, for example, okay, so, uh, okay, the second option will be this, and so this is the first option you can try. The second option is this. Let me, uh, how about let me use that color here. So this, we are interested in the shear flow chain stress along this card. Another option is this, you simply, this is our line of the symmetry. Respect to the line of the symmetry, you pick another cut here. Okay, so for this option, let me use the beta color to. You. For these options, because the cut you selected is symmetric respect to the line of the symmetry here, so you pretty much make sure the the shear flow in magnitude will be the same. So this cut is QA. This cut is QA. Okay. So for this case, again, we use our formula, the shear flow of the cut, QA plus QA, one QA is from this side, this QA is from this side, and from this side, and that is equal to VQ over I here. And what's V? V again is our uh, given, and I is the one we calculated here, okay, and what is Q? Q is the shaded area of the whole things here. Because you select this one and this one, that will form the shaded area. So for this one, Q will be double as previously calculated. So Q will be equal to point, uh, 0.945 inch cube. Okay, so you put everything together and then again, once you have the QA being determined, then you can determine the tau A simply QA equal to T. T is the, the width here, 0 0.5. So this number should be the same as we calculate here. So here you have two options you can try. And how about at B here? So let me erase the information. So now we interested in B. B is at the neutral axis. Okay, B is just located on the neutral axis here. Okay. So again, uh, here you can try again. You can utilize the features here. We know along this cut, the shear, the shear equal to zero. So why not? We, we interested in the B here. Why not you pick another one here and to make up the shaded area like this one here. So again, uh, shear flow equal to VQ over I, and shear flow uh, on the card here, we have QB. Okay, so the shear flow here is QB, and shear flow is Q, which is equal to zero. So under this uh, equations, you can calculate QB, and then once QB determined, then you can determine the tau B by, for example, the thickness here, this is a T, okay? So uh, T is 0.5, okay? so. QB divided by T. Okay. So now let's look at the how to calculate Q. The same thing for this case, V is 10,000 newtons as given here, and I is being calculated here. So this should be no problem. And Q, basically here, Q, you can, uh, in terms of this one, you can uh, say decompose into the two simple uh, rectangles for calculation here, just like showing here. So repeating this one, then you can find out the QB and then Q. So this is a QB, this is a, the tau A here, okay? So that is one example. And for this example here, I want to demonstrate the, the options. So here we're interested in knowing the, the string stress along this cut here. I'm going to demonstrate you three options. Each option will give us, from each option will give us the same answer, okay? The first option to determine this one is this. Uh, you can see for this kind of cross-section is symmetric. 
So this is a line of the symmetry, okay, so along which the V, uh, v applied, okay, so the V applied here. So this is a line of symmetry. So the first option is this, because we're interested in this, so we pick another cut due to the symmetry, so unknown here, okay, so this line respect to you, this cut respect to the line of the symmetry is symmetry is a uh, respect is a mirrored uh, symmetry uh, of this one here. So that's showing here. So right now you have selected the shaded area for this. So again, the shear flow. Let me call this is the uh, QB here. Okay, and due to the symmetry, and you can make make sure that is you can pretty much ensure yourself this also in magnitude equal to QB. So QB the shear flow in the cut equal to VQ over I. And we have two cuts here, so QB, QB. Why QB, QB? Due to the symmetry, we have, we, we're looking for this one, and due to the symmetry selections, and this has the same magnitude, that one, so we have QB here. And from here, uh, V is the given one, okay? So here V is given uh, 1200 newtons, and I is a moment of initial of this kind of the, the the shape, uh, the cross section shape, and here I have calculated, so that one is calculated. And what's Q? Q uh, for this case, you simply calculate the shaded area here, and here for this option, I calculate here. Okay, so once you have determined, then you can determine the QB, and QB, once you determine, you simply divide by the weight here. So the weight is this one here. So that is the T, divide by T, and then you get the QB. Okay. So let me go back to you uh, for some reasons. Okay, so that's the tau B. <coughs> okay, so that is this one. And then the second option is this. The second option is this, if this is our interest rate and we're looking for the QB and tau B here. The second option is you may try to select using the features you know during, along the cut of the symmetry, the Q equal to zero. So for this case, you calculate the Q. This is the shaded area for Q. So again, the VQ over I, and that is our shear flow and zero plus QB. Okay, so where the V is given 1200, um, 1200 pounds, uh, and then a Q equal to simply corresponding to this case. Okay, so you should be able to calculate and I is given here. So for this case, the QB, once you determine, then the tau B simply equal to QB divided by thickness and the, the sorry, the width here. Okay, so that is the second option. The third option here I demonstrated is the not so good option, and like I demonstrated here. The third option is this. You simply, this is our interest rate, and you pick this portion. You pick this portion. This is a cut here where we're interested in finding the QB here. If you pick this shaded area, and then here is what we're interested in finding the QB, and also this shaded area um, make a cut here as well. So let me call that is Q, uh, whatever, say in terms of my notation, Q2 here, okay? And again, here, let me ask you, uh, is QB in magnitude equal to Q2? No because the two cut is not in metric, it is not in symmetric. So QB is not in magnitude equal to Q2. So if you pick these options, and then this is the shaded area, and let me see. So you should be able to determine the shaded area. Again, our shear flow template is VQ over I. And that is shear flow, shear flows on the cuts. So QB plus Q2 here and QB is not equal to Q2, we have two unknowns. And for this equation in which you can apply V equal to 1200 uh, uh, pounds, and then I is the being calculated here, and VQ over IQ is the one here you calculated. 
Okay, so one equation, two unknowns, but here we have two unknowns. We need to have another equation. So let me say another equation could be coming from, let me focus on how to determine the Q2 here. So if you want to determine Q2, then here, how about we take the whole upper portions, the upper fringe as the shaded area. In this case, you can see they make a two cut, that is symmetric. So this one we're looking for, and this one due to symmetric respect to the middle line here, that also is a Q2. So for this case, uh, you can quickly determine the Q2, uh, the two Q2 equal to VQ over I, and in here, this Q is the Q corresponding to this shaded area here. So from this case, you determine the Q2. Q2 once determined, you plug in here, 137.3, and with this equation, you can determine the QB here. Okay, so this whole detailed, the calculation of this, I would say this option is not so good because this one will induce quite a bit calculations, okay? So that is the option one I've been selected. So here you have three choices, and choices is one like this, and choice two is the bad, and choice three is good enough. So either three choices, here you can go over the in detail, that will give us the same answers, 78, 79.8, uh, 79.8, okay? So here I simply just want to share with you, there's are so many options uh, to, select, to select the shaded areas for uh, exposing the, the shear information uh, we are interested. And you shouldn't confine yourself to only one. Okay, you during the exercise you can try to explore as many options as possible just for the exercising for the learning purposes. But in terms of the professional exercise, I would strongly suggest you, I strongly suggest people to pick the most efficient one. For example, the option three would be good. The option one would be good. And here, let me conclude, make conclusions of this chapter here. This chapter basically is dedicated to the uh, template. This chapter is dedicated to the template Q equal to VQ over I, or tau equal to VQ over IT. And for simple shape of the cross section, usually determine the Q, the shaded area for determine the Q should be easy to deal with. However, for box beam, for more complicated cross section beams, and that um, just like we're showing in this example here, and this one here, you uh, we have a uh, multiple options, and then that one will do need a, a thorough kind of the, um, the justifications for which option for which selection of the shaded area is easier for calculations okay so so basically in these chapters we only have only have two equations but actually a lot of stories right now you should have sensed that a lot of stories happen in the regarding the shaded area and then uh, regarding the the how to select the shaded area and what that means of the shear flow associated with the cut you made. Okay, so that is a key of this chapter here. And here, if you would need more um, the information, and uh, you can try to explore uh, my uh, video, which uh, recorded from my classroom teaching, and this link will be provided uh, below. Okay, thank you.